So bear in mind, this is a consensus report rather than guidelines. So a consensus report is uh, one that's derived from the opinion of experts, whereas guidelines, as we classically think of them, are um, put uh, more systematically reviewed uh, evidence. And they're called as a consensus report, which I think is a which I think is an appropriate description for this. I think it's useful. Our last set of guidelines in the UK are, that most of us would use are from NICE uh, 2015. So, and a lot has happened since uh, in, in the last six years in the Type 1 field. So it's, it's a welcome uh, addition. It's a long piece of work. It's uh, over 15 sections um, and over 40 pages, but it's worth a read for a number of reasons. It brings people up to speed with um, developments in the area. It's fairly comprehensive. It starts from um, education uh, at the time of diagnosis, all the way through to um, through be to beta cell replacement um, and hybrid closed loops and, and all of that. So it's fairly comprehensive and it's worth a read. Um, it'll give ideas for service and furthermore, we can use it to lobby for service development and service expansion. Um, so it's a useful document to refer to if we're, if we're doing if we're doing these. The highlights for me um, and the things, the, the sections which I think people will find interesting are the sections relating to diagnosis. So the greater use of islet autoantibodies um, and C-peptide um, for accurate diagnosis of type 1 diabetes. We know that we are pretty, we're not very good at diagnosing people, particularly in the older age group. So the use of islet autoantibodies earlier on um, soon after diagnosis and C-peptide later on, um, I think is, is worth looking at and worth considering. Um, NICE, as you know, currently don't recommend antibody testing at diagnosis, but I think more and more people are doing that. The other sections are use of technology in remote clinics. So the COVID pandemic has, um, has uh, sort of shown how useful remote reviews can be for some patients some of the time. And it's worth thinking about how we can incorporate that into our um, into our service. Certainly it saves time for patients in terms of travel and parking. It may not save us much time, but I think for some patients who need a frequent review, the use, you know, the sort of remote LibreView and Diascend and all of these things do make uh, do facilitate that. Um, there's a, f a hefty section, as you can imagine, on glucose sensing and hybrid closed loops. Uh, and this is moving really fast, um, it, particularly in the UK with the hybrid closed loop uh, trial that's currently ongoing. Um, so uh, it sort of brings that to the fore. And if you look at some of the authors, they're quite involved in the technology field. So I'd be surprised if this wasn't highlighted in the um, consensus report. Uh, and I guess the, uh, the other section that's worth um, highlighting is the section around psychosocial support. So again, here, we, we and many others are aware that we're not providing, it's difficult to provide a service in this area, um, even though it's very important for some of our patients. So it highlights the need. It doesn't tell us how to go about it. I guess these are discussions we need to take up with our commissioners, but uh, those would be the areas that I think would be of interest, but I think as a general read, it's worth looking at.